announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. WCW NWO Uncensored 1998 took place in Mobile, Alabama on March 15th. Around 7,500 fans attended the event with an estimated 415,000 fans buying the show on pay-per-view, similar numbers to last month's Super Brawl event. Hollywood Hogan vs Randy Savage is our main event, a match contested inside a steel cage, and Scott Hall finally gets his world title shot when he wrestled Sting in the semi-main spot. The commentators talk about tonight possibly being the night the NWO falls apart. Hogan and Savage going the wars bad enough, but Scott Hall winning the world belt could cause tension in the the NWO locker room before Hogan even steps inside the cage. So let's find out what happened and let's see if the NWO survive after Uncensored 1998. Quick side note guys, I haven't been feeling too good this week and I've got a real bad throat. I'm pretty sure it's gonna make this video sound bad, so apologies in advance. We've got a TV title match to start us off, champion Booker T vs Eddie Guerrero. On Thunder this past week, Eddie defeated nephew Chavo, and now Chavo has to always be at Eddie's side, and he pretty much has to do whatever Eddie says. The best thing about this is that Eddie and Chavo now have something to do on TV. Eddie stalls at the opening bell, and Booker gets the crowd pumped up. Guerrero tries to cheap shot Booker, but the TV champ delivers a backdrop, and Eddie gets his ass broken with a sidewalk slam. When Eddie gets clotheslined out of the ring, he wants to know if Chavo's gonna help him out and Chavo's like, nothing I can do pal, you're on your own. The crowd chants Eddie sucks as he extends his hand to Booker while on his knees but Booker's got a firm handshake it seems and Eddie goes down after a hook kick. Eddie then takes a power slam and he says, that's enough. He's going home and he's gonna forget this match ever took place. Booker brings the challenger back to the ring for a press slam and the champ thinks about a Harlem hangover but Eddie finally fights back with a dropkick followed by a superplex. Eddie's momentum gets briefly stopped with a standing sidekick from Booker T, but Eddie manages to counter the scissors kick with a low drop kick. Eddie then focuses all his efforts on Booker's knee and he mocks Booker T on the outside, raising the roof while the crowd boos. Back in the ring, Eddie brings it down to the mat where he gets warned over and over again about using the ropes for extra leverage. Thing is though, Nick Patrick traded in respect for that shit hairdo of his, so Eddie keeps cheating until he's finally had enough. Guerrero performs his apron sent on while continuing to target Booker's knee. It looks like Eddie delays a bit when on the top rope, but if you watch it again closely, Guerrero's actually still aiming for the knee, but in fairness, it didn't look good. Eddie performs a back suplex in the ring, and out of nowhere, Booker comes back with a flapjack followed by a scissors kick. I mean, it was just like that. Eddie dodges a top rope dropkick and he tries setting Booker up for a super hurricane rana. Booker pushes Eddie away, he then lands that dropkick and Booker retains the television title. It looks like Chavo approves of this outcome and once Booker T leaves, Eddie confronts his nephew, wondering why he was smiling when Booker won. The two shove each other, Eddie realizes he's maybe being too harsh. He leads Chavo into a false sense of security and then Chavo gets attacked. Eddie throws Chavo into the guardrail before laying the boots in and that's how the opening match ended. Still a decent match, though you've seen better from both competitors. Conan vs Juventud Guerrero is up next. Conan's been making fun of Hoovy ever since he unmasked and even though Hoovy lost a match against Scott Norton on Nitro, he still got booked in this grudge match by the WCW executive committee. Guerrero comes out guns blazing and Conan has to keep Hoovy Juice in check with a clothesline. Guerrero fires back with a head scissor takedown, he then intentionally feigns air Hoovy and uh, it didn't look great did it? Guerrero gets sent into the ring steps and Conan rearranges the furniture a bit but it's Hoovy who uses the ring steps as a springboard and Conan gets taken out. Back in the ring, Hoovy performs a springboard dropkick and Conan replies by dropping Guerrero on the top rope. Conan then performs a unique submission hold, but remember Hoovy's new motto, never surrender. If you've got a motto like that, you can't ever submit again throughout your entire career. Hoovy jumps on Conan's shoulders and K-Dog counters with a released German suplex. Hoovy does a front flip when taking a catapult. 
And then the punishment continues when Conan throws Guerrero across the ring like he's nothing at all. Conan then performs a rocking horse and Hoovy takes a lot of weight on his neck when Conan sits down. You can see Conan checking on Guerrero because that right there could have been very dangerous. The referee and Conan let Hoovy roll out of the ring to recover a little and Guerrero takes his time. When the match resumes, Conan performs another unique submission hold from the fireman's carry position but remember, never surrender. There, <laughs> there's a great reversal spot next where Hoovy lands on his feet from a top rope German suplex attempt and he immediately drop kicks Conan afterwards. Guerrero lays the boots in as he begins to get his confidence back. but. Conan once again stops Guerrera, this time with a wheelbarrow suplex. Hoovy manages to come back and he delivers a face buster. Guerrera then tries to end it with a 450 but Conan dodges it and Hoovy lands on his feet. Conan then performs the cradle DDT and somehow Guerrera kicks out. Conan then performs a modified Samoan drop and his lackadaisical cover ends up getting countered. Hoovy performs a quick crucifix pin and Hoovy defeats Conan in what I thought was Hoovy's best match so far in WCW. Conan keeps his heat by delivering another cradle DDT after the bail and Hoovy gets dumped out of the ring. Not sure if that was totally necessary but there you have it. JJ Dillon says the giant approached him earlier on and he requested that the power bomb was made legal again for his match tonight against Kevin Nash. Nash had dropped giant on his head, it sold out and since then the move has been outlawed. In the interest of fairness, Dillon spoke with the NWO and the boys were delighted that giant would make such a request. So for one night only, because it's uncensored, the power bomb can be used in the Kevin Nash vs giant match tonight on pay per view. Up next in the ring we have a cruiserweight title match, champion Chris Jericho vs challenger Dean Malenko. Jericho's heel work since January has been fantastic, a breath of fresh air in comparison to the more typical heels we find in WCW and more prominently the new world order. He tells the ref to show some respect to the champion and he's got on tights that say Jericho's the man of 1004 holds, he knows 4 more holds than Dean Malenko apparently. Dean gets the better of Chris during the first exchange and the second exchange. On Chris's third try, he goes down after a shoulder block. He thought he got it right after nailing Malenko with an enziguri, but his springboard crossbody doesn't work and Chris decides to leave. No point in hanging around. He gets to the top of the entranceway, Dean breaks the count, and Chris comes back to the ring after thinking it through for a moment. Jericho takes a good kick in here, but he comes back with a spine buster. He then taunts Dean with his weird strut that would become a favourite in WCW Revenge on N64, and he performs his cocky trademark pin afterwards, only scoring a two count. Jericho messes Dean around, toying with the Iceman and choking him on the ropes. He drives his knee into Dean's back while stretching his face, but Dean isn't going to give up. This must be hold 534. Chris performs a lion salt, but Malenko gets a foot on the ropes. Chris isn't happy about this, of course. Dean gets choked on the middle rope, and Jericho applies a backbreaker submission. Malenko fights back from the corner, and the crowd cheer for Dean firing up. He performs a back suplex, but Chris gets up first after the count, and Malenko takes a cent on. Jericho gives Dean an uncomfortable seat on the middle ropes and Dean takes a drop kick to the face. Chris then slaps Dean around a bit and Malenko looks absolutely pissed off, but his attempt at firing up again gets stopped with a reverse suplex from the cruiserweight champion. Dean's really struggling to get going here. He tries to steal a victory with a forward roll and a backslide, but Jericho kicks out. Chris wanted to perform his springboard drop kick here, but Malenko was too close to the turnbuckles, and Dean takes a springboard punch to the face. A top rope backdrop counter gives Dean a little bit of hope, but he misses a drop kick afterwards, and Jericho tries to apply a lion tamer, though Dean makes it to the ropes. Dean has one more big counter left in him. He reverses a top rope Hurricane Rana attempt with a super gut buster, but when he goes for his jumping leg lariat, Chris grabs him and we see the lion tamer. Dean tries to make it to the ropes, but Chris brings him back and Chris sits low. Dean has no choice but to give up, and what a dominating performance here from the cruiserweight champion. Dean was completely outperformed in this match, and Mean Gene Okerlund wants to know what's going on. Okerlund totally ignores Jericho so he can have a word with Malenko. Gene says Dean was the odds on favourite to win tonight and Malenko couldn't get the job done and Dean just can't speak. Okerlund says he's known Dean since he was a young man, he knew Dean's father and Gene knows that Malenko should have won this match tonight. He says that Dean's on a pay per view losing streak and he calls Dean a bona fide loser. Don't hold back there Gene, I'm sure he feels much better now that you've said that. 
Ogerlin wants to know where does Dean Malenko go from here and Dean says he's going home. Sounds like Dean Malenko's teasing a retirement. An interesting match here and I like the change of pace. It was unexpected to see Dean get overwhelmed by an opponent and the post-match interview was good too, even if Mean Gene was an absolute savage. Good stuff though and another good match at Uncensored. Next up we have Lex Luger vs the newest member of the NWO, Scotty Steiner, and don't get your hopes up either because it's just under 4 minutes long. Scotty attacks when Luger is getting in the ring, he takes Lex from corner to corner before delivering a belly to belly suplex, Steiner then drops an elbow on Lex and he chokes him on the middle rope before sweet haircut Nick Patrick tells him to knock it off. The match then goes to the outside where Luger takes more punishment but Lex counters a suplex when Steiner tries to bring him back inside. The moment of the very short match then happens when Steiner throws himself over the guardrail right here and when the match gets back inside the ropes, Lex begins firing up with an inverted atomic drop and a few clotheslines. Lex signals for the rack but Steiner hits a low blow. No idea what's going on here with Nick Patrick's positioning but he of course didn't see the kick in the balls. The brutal officiating continues when Luger finds himself in a Steiner recliner with his legs clearly out of the ring yet Nick Patrick doesn't break the hold. Scott then grabs a chair, he goes to get back in the ring but brother Rick shows up. Scott's distracted as he steps back inside the ropes, Luger hits him with a forearm to the back while Scott Norton takes out Rick and that's how it ended, Lex wins via pinfall. Scott attacks Luger and Nick Patrick after the bell and Luger gets out of the ring when Scott picks up a chair. Rick then gets inside the ropes and he backdrops Scott out of the ring when Scott tries a chair shot. A strange booking decision here and quite simply Scotty should have won this match. If WCW want to build him up as a single superstar then he needs to win matches early on. The Triple Jeopardy match is up next for the US Championship, DDP vs Chris Benoit vs Raven. Raven and Benoit have been feuding since late 1997 and when DDP offered Chris an opportunity to win the US Championship, Raven and his flock continued to give Chris problems. Benoit and DDP aren't friendly with each other either, their mini rivalry is all based around respect, but Raven's involvement is a bit more traditional in the sense that he just doesn't like Paige nor Benoit and so we have this triple jeopardy match. This is a false count anywhere bout and it's first fall to a finish. We get a 3 way lockup at the beginning of the match with no one getting an advantage. The 3 go at it again and all 3 men take a punch. In the third 3 way lockup results in all guys falling out of the ring, a good original way to start the match. Dallas gets taken out at the ring steps meaning Benoit and Raven can do some work inside the ropes. Benoit tries to secure a quick win with a hook clothesline and a back elbow but Raven kicks out. DDP gets back in as Benoit's laying the boots into Raven and Raven tries to steal a victory over Benoit after a DDP clothesline. You can instantly tell that these guys have went through this match backstage and they aren't winging it at all. Check this out for example, Benoit slides under Page to hit Raven with a baseball slide, allowing DDP to perform a plancha before the three guys get back in the ring. Compare this to WWF triple threat matches at the time and it's night and day already. Raven gets punished with a snap suplex from Benoit and a pancake from DDP. Neither Dallas nor Chris can score a pinfall over Raven though. Benoit delivers a top rope splash on Raven but Paige is right there to break up the cover. And now Paige and Benoit are getting a little frustrated with each other. The two fight and they fall out of the ring, allowing Raven to perform a dive over the top rope. Raven hasn't done enough to pin either man though so all men get up and they begin fighting on the entranceway. All three men take bumps on the guardrails as they make their way closer to the stage and Raven decides to bring a trash can into the match. Paige takes it away, he places it over Raven, Benoit and DDP then hit the trash can with a few crutches that were sitting close by and then they both try to pin Raven. When Dallas covers Raven, Benoit uses the crutch on Dallas's injured back. We were told for weeks it was injured ribs but let's not get picky, it's a bandaged area so it's injured. <laughs> Raven and Benoit then work together to put DDP through one of the uncensored light boxes sitting on the entrance stage and they both think doing it again would be a great idea. It looks like Paige may be out of the match now and so Raven and Benoit are going to do a little work together. Benoit hits Raven with a kitchen sink but the cameraman misses it. The cameras don't miss Raven dropping a table on Benoit though. Chris fires back by throwing Raven into that table while it's set up against the rampway and Benoit then brings Raven back to the ring while using some rope. A low blow puts Benoit down inside the ring and Raven grabs a chair. He then goes for the drop toe hold but Benoit counters and Raven takes all the impact. 
We then see DDP crawling back to the ring as Benoit puts the chair between the top and middle ropes. Raven takes another bump here and when Raven covers him, the leader of the flock puts a foot on the ropes. Falls count anywhere guys. Benoit applies a sleeper, DDP shows up to create a human centipede sleeper, Raven breaks it up with a double jawbreaker. Benoit then begins his rolling German suplexes and Paige jumps in for the last one, giving us a big three man German suplex that makes the crowd go apeshit. Raven and Benoit get up and they take out Paige, Raven then orders Benoit to hold DDP up because the flock have a surprise for Dallas. Lodi sign. Turns out that's a stop sign the page just got whacked with, and now Raven's gonna use a table to end the match. Benoit ends up taking out Raven with the stop sign while Paige is getting set on the table, and Benoit now wants to superplex Raven to win the US Championship. Dallas puts a stop to that though and Benoit falls out of the ring, and Paige hits Raven with a super diamond cutter onto the table. The table didn't break but it's one of those times you don't really care because it still looked pretty brutal in the best way possible. Dallas retains the US Championship at Uncensored in a very fun triple jeopardy match. Chris Benoit extends his hand to DDP, helping Paige back to his feet and showing that there's still respect between these two. Kevin Nash vs The Giant up next and you know the story, the jackknife and all variations of the powerbomb got outlawed after sold out and The Giant had to sit on the bench after the incredibly scary botched powerbomb in January. For one night only, the jackknife has been reinstated even though Hollywood Hogan was paying Nash's fines every time he still used the move. Still, after Dylan's announcement earlier, you definitely expect to see another powerbomb in this battle of the big men. And guess what? Yeah, that's right, neither Nash nor the Jan perform a powerbomb in this very match. I know, I know, it's fucking dumb. We get a long lockup at the beginning with Nash overpowering the giant, Kev thinks he's hot shit after dodging a corner attack, Big Sexy then applies a side headlock and he laughs as he switched to a hammerlock, but giant isn't in the mood so Nash takes a hard clothesline. The giant performs an elbow drop, he misses a second but he's still on his feet before Nash and Big Sexy gets sent over the top rope. On the outside, giant gets thrown into the ring post and this seems to cause the big man some serious problems with his neck. He's slow to get back in the ring and Kevin taunts Giant as he begins focusing on the upper back and neck. Nash chokes Giant with his big boot in the corner before applying a sleeper and when Giant fights out, Kevin instantly replies with a clubbing blow to the back of the neck. We then see a leapfrog body guillotine from Kevin Nash and Big Sexy thinks he has this all figured out. The neck brace comes off as Tony Schiavone says the referee should maybe think about stopping this one, but the Giant then kicks Nash in the balls. If he won't stop it for a low blow, then he's not going to stop it out of sympathy for the Giant. A headbutt floors Kevin and the giant delivers a few clotheslines. Nash also gets body slammed and then the giant signals for the choke slam. The big man changes his mind and he goes for a power bomb, but Brian Adam shows up and it's a DQ finish. Conan and Vincent attack the giant, but the big man shoves him away before breaking Adam's baseball bat over his knee. Vincent and Conan get choke slammed, but Nash breaks another bat across the giant's back. Still though, the giant hulks up and the NWO get out of the ring. After all the build ups since sold out, it felt really shit and a bit cheap not to get a decisive finish here, and the match itself wasn't good either in comparison to sold out, so yeah, this was another dud. Uncensored's turning out like most WCW pay per views, when it's good it's excellent and when it's bad it's the absolute shits, doesn't seem like there's any room in between. Bret Hart takes on Kurt Hennig at Uncensored as the hitman continues his quest to break down the NWO brick by brick. Expectations are high due to the history these two have, but let's not forget that Kurt has struggled a little to get that spark back while in WCW. Let's see if the hitman can bring it out. At the opening bell, Kurt gets out of the ring for a little walk and when he gets back inside, he slaps Brett before the two lock up. Neither man gets the upper hand and Kurt complains about the slimy crap in Brett's hair. The hitman performs a side headlock and Hennig pulls that slimy crap to try to get out. Brett puts Kurt down with a shoulder block and another headlock takedown. Once again, Kurt goes for the hair and Hennig manages to bring it to the corner. There's another side headlock, another takedown, there's another hair pull from Hennig. The two try the hip toss spot where Kurt spins on the mat after landing but it doesn't look as good as before and Kurt gets frustrated while taking another timeout. 
After discussing things with Ravishing Rick Rude, Kurt tries to get back in the ring, but Brett has other plans. The hitman tries a suplex, but Henny counters. Brett counters the roll up afterwards, though, and he manages to lock in a sharpshooter, but Rude then jumps in the ring and he punches Brett in the face. Look at how quick Rude gets out again, and how he naturally resumes the position he was in. It's fantastic. The fans tell the referee that Rude jumped in, but the heels get away with it and the match continues on. Henny pulls off his knee scissor stomp and Kurt's gonna play Brett at his own game by softening up the left leg and knee. Mike Tanay says the plan here is to render the sharpshooter ineffective. Rick Rude chokes Brett while the referee isn't looking and Kurt wraps the hitman's leg around the ring post. Our referee remains absolutely oblivious as Rude does the same moments later. Ravishing Rick absolutely loves it as Kurt slaps Brett around in the opposite corner before locking in a figure four. Rick's gonna give Kurt a hand too and again, Rick's so good at resuming the position when he thinks he's gonna get caught out. Eventually, the referee notices Rude helping Kurt and so the hole gets broke. Brett tries to fight back in the corner and he does stun Hennig for a moment but a few kicks to the injured leg sends Brett back down to the mat and Kurt's gonna twist the knee and hope for a submission victory. Brett won't give up though so Kurt drops a leg over the hitman before delivering a body slam. Kurt then goes to the top rope but Brett's able to shake the pain off for a moment and Hennig gets crotched on the turnbuckle. Hart pulls himself up and we see Hennig's ring post nutshot spot that again makes me think of SummerSlam 91 and how things in that match just went so well. Brett then delivers an inverted atomic drop followed by a clothesline. Brett hits a side rushing leg sweep and a bulldog from the corner but Hennig stays in it by getting a foot on the ropes. Hennig takes a backbreaker. We see the elbow from Brett's rope. Hennig kicks out of the follow up cover and Hart takes the sternum first corner bump. Kurt then performs the perfect plex. That should be it all over but Brett somehow kicks out and Kurt can't believe it. Rude gets on the apron and Brett sends Kurt into Rude. Brett tries to roll Kurt up but Hennig counters while grabbing the tie but still, the match isn't over. Brett counters a Hennig sunset flip with a sharpshooter and just as Kurt tops out, Rick Rude launches an attack. This is pretty cool because we see Rude getting very physical here and it's something we hadn't seen in a long time. He even pulls off a Rude awakening on Brett after Kurt nails the hitman with a chair. Kurt's next chair shot looked absolutely terrible but fair dues I guess for trying to protect your opponent. Still, it would have been best if he didn't use the chair at all. Kurt puts a foot on Brett as it's announced that Bret Hart's the winner via submission. It's unfair to compare this to SummerSlam 91 but it's also very hard not to because that IC title match was so so good. This uncensored match wasn't bad by any means but if you want to see Hennig vs Hart you simply can't beat their 1991 MSG encounter. Hennig was pretty good here at uncensored though and he does wrestle these Bret matches differently. So yeah, it's still good, there's just better options available. Scott Hall finally gets his world title shot after winning World War 3 1997. He was supposed to get his opportunity at Super Brawl but due to the controversial Sting vs Hogan nonsense from Starcade, the bad guy had to take a back seat and wait it out. Hall's reactions to playing second fiddle to Hogan were inconsistent from a TV standpoint. He was upset at first and he even walked away from Hogan but the next week he was back to being Hulk's best friend. I just put this down to WCW's struggles with continuity really. Dusty Rhodes comes to the ring with Hall and the commentators wonder how the dynamic within the NWO would change if Scott Hall wins the belt tonight. Sting walks down to the ring getting a great ovation as always and the bad guy decides to snatch the belt away from Mark Curtis and hold it up in the air. Sting doesn't take too kindly to this and the bell rings as Sting begins attacking Scott. Scott goes to the outside, this clearly wasn't how Hall wanted to start the bout. Hall gets back in the ring and he manages to get Sting in a wrist lock but Sting stops the shoulder attacks with a short arm close. Line. Hall backs up, he considers a new strategy, so he invites Sting in for a test of strength. Sting falls for it and Scott gets in a cheap shot. A few right hands get followed up with a hip toss block and Scott pulls off a choke slam, but instead of covering Sting, he makes fun of the giant. This was a costly mistake. Sting pulls off a face buster followed by a few right hands. Scott's all over the place as Sting continues to strike him and a dropkick ends up getting Hall stuck in the ropes. Dusty lends a hand and the bad guy falls to the outside. 
Dream gives Scott some advice before the match resumes, he then trips Sting up and this allows Scott to hit a clothesline but Sting kicks out of the follow up cover. Scott floors the world champion with a discus punch, we see a corner clothesline followed by the fall away slam, but again Scott only gets a two count. Bobby Heenan says Scott Hall could run the NWO if he wins the world belt tonight as our match continues on. Scott slaps Sting around a little, he pokes Sting in the eye when the champ fights back. The two then crash into each other during an Irish whip but Scott gets the worst of this exchange when Sting falls on Scott's little bad guy. Mark Curtis begins a 10 count and Scott manages to distract the referee long enough for Dusty Rhodes to slowly creep into the ring and drop an elbow on the stinger. One of the most slow and deliberate pieces of interference I've ever seen but everyone involved gets a pass because everyone involved is so awesome. Scott begins laying in the punches and Sting's not budging. The icon screams at Scott before delivering an inverted atomic drop and Scott then takes a stinger splash to the back. When Sting goes for the death lock, Dusty gets on the apron. Sting takes out Dusty. Scott tries to steal the victory but Scott gets thrown into Mark Curtis and Mark goes down in spectacular fashion. Looks like he's having fun here. Dusty gives Scott those brass knucks that don't look like brass knucks but we'll call them brass knucks anyway. Sting gets whacked. The referee wakes up but Sting kicks out at 2, the crowd went crazy for this kick out. Hall says that's enough, he goes for the outsider's edge, he gets the stinger up but the champ counters and we see the scorpion death drop. After waiting this long, Scott Hall couldn't beat the stinger and the championship remains with world championship wrestling. Not a great world title match if I'm honest, it was ok and the guys didn't do anything wrong. I don't know what it is but I think Scott and Sting just don't pair up very well. I would have much preferred if Sting beat Hall without the interference and the brass knucks and all that stuff but there you have it, Sting remains world champion. Hollywood Hogan vs Macho Man Randy Savage is our main event. This one's been building up for months and it's all about Savage going rogue. Hollywood wanted Savage to remember his place in the NWO totem pole but Savage wouldn't accept Hogan telling him what to do. Things reached the boiling point at Super Brawl when Hulk stopped the NWO from helping Savage during Randy's match with Lex Luger and later that night Randy Savage cost Hogan the world championship. Things would continue to escalate when the men got personal, bringing their families into it when cutting promos, and Macho Man even started hanging around with WCW guys such as The Giant and Sting. One of the biggest head scratchers about this whole thing though is why has Savage remained in the NWO when the whole faction have turned their backs on him? Or why hasn't Hogan just kicked Randy out of the group? So over these past few weeks we've all been kinda dubious about this rivalry, progression has completely stalled and nothing's changed for a long time but maybe tonight it all comes to an end and we can move on to something else. The cage lowers and we can see it's a different design this time around, not like that monstrosity we saw at Halloween Havoc. Hollywood Hogan comes out first and… his… he's got a gold tooth. Old Hip Hogan with a gold tooth, what a complete arsehole. Out comes Randy Savage along with Miss Elizabeth and now it's time for the uncensored 1998 main event. Hogan goes on the attack right away as the production crew have difficulty sorting out the arena lights. The ring then gets lit up and the cage fence is gonna make this a bit tricky to watch when we switch the hard camera. Hollywood chokes Randy on the top rope, the macho man takes the big boot as Liz watches on from the outside. Hogan then rakes Randy's back in the corner before sending him into the opposite corner for a clothesline. The macho man gets choked with Hogan's boot and Hulk then tries to slam Savage's face into the cage but Randy blocks it. Hogan decides to rake Savage's face instead. Hollywood performs a body slam, he tries to hit a few elbow drops but Randy moves out of the way and now the macho man's gonna go on offense for a while. Randy lands a few lefts followed by a right and a back elbow, he sinks his boot into Hogan's neck before choking Hollywood with a bandana. The choking continues on the mat and Randy then tries to ram Hogan's head into the steel but it looks like neither of these brothers want to take any bumps that involve the cage. Another rake to the face turns it around for Hogan and Savage then gets whipped with Hogan's weight belt. Randy gets choked this time around and I'm sorry, I can only talk about what happens in the ring but this has been boring as fuck. More whips to the back from Hollywood, there's another body slam, Hogan then misses his leg drop and this gives Randy a chance to use that belt. Hogan gets whipped, Randy covers Hogan but Hogan kicks out. There's another choke right there from Randy Savage, an absolutely terrible cage bump from Hogan that again reminded me of the Halloween Havoc main event. Hogan gets whipped again, he gets thrown into the cage again, Randy then punches Hogan in the face and we see Hollywood's been busted open. 
Things get a little better when Hogan backdrops Savage into the cage. At least it's something different. He then... Uh, he picks up his belt and he whips Randy a few times. Ra <laughs> Randy then gets put on Hogan's shoulder and Hollywood drives the macho man's head into the cage. Randy takes a seat while he blades. Both men are busted open and forget what I said about both guys not wanting to take bumps that involve the cage. Macho Man takes a beating here while covered in blood. Randy can barely stand as Hogan continues to lay in the strikes and I gotta say, the blood has changed the dynamic of this match in a good way. This is a great example of Color actually helping a match that had nothing going for it until both men started bleeding. And then things just get confusing when referee Mickey J opens the cage door and he lets Hogan do more damage on the outside. I don't understand, isn't the whole purpose of a cage match to keep both guys inside and have a fight to the finish? Anyway, not a lot happens on the outside, Hogan does more damage before the two get back inside the cage and the macho man fights back. Macho then gets an adrenaline spike and he climbs the cage in record time. He delivers a double axe handle from the top and the producers must have decided to keep the camera zoomed out due to the amount of blood in the match. Savage is all fired up now, he signals for the elbow drop but then the NWO booty man shows up. He gets the key from Mickey J, he gets in the ring, he saves Hogan and he takes out Charles Robinson. NWO Beefcake then invites Randy to jump down with that elbow drop but Randy decides to climb down instead. Just then, backup arrives in the form of the Stinger. Sting's here to help out the Macho Man. The four men have a stare down, and Randy seems happy to get a little support. But then he clotheslines Sting, and the crowd are left completely confused. Guys, no shit, this is how the match ends. Randy spits on Hogan and he says he never liked Hollywood. Hogan reminds Randy that Macho's part of the NWO, and the show fades to black. There's no winner, there's no loser, just confusion as fans file out of the arena wondering what the fuck that main event was all about. There are some real highlights on this show with the first three matches ranging from very good to great. The Triple Jeopardy US title match was great too and Bred vs Hennig wasn't bad either, but there's also a few stankers here that really hurts the show and the main event was just I don't know, I really don't know what to say about it except it was a spit in the face to people who paid money to see this event. It was getting good when the blood started flowing, Hogan and Savage did turn it up for a few moments but the match fell in quality just as quickly as it started picking up. It sucks too because I like recommending WCW shows to some of you guys who might have missed out previously but again, I have to warn you to be selective about this show. There's some great stuff in Uncensored 1998 that you shouldn't miss out on, but there's also some problematic matches that makes you remember why WCW failed so hard as time went on. Still, check out the good matches I mentioned, don't miss Malenko vs Jericho, the opener, Conan vs Guerrera, and the US title matches. The rest, take it or leave it. Thanks for watching this one guys, again apologies for my bad throat but it's not like I have the voice of an angel anyway. And I hope you join me next Thursday for Reliving the War and we'll see what's next for WCW and the NWO on Monday Nitro. Take care everyone and again thank you for watching.